All right, so welcome to Algebra 2. Today is April 21st. Um, a few rules, make sure to be respectful of others. Only use the annotation and chat features when you're asked. Um, I'll answer that at the end. Um, have a question, make sure to raise your hand or type it into the chat box. Try to have a pencil and paper um, for notes if possible. And then if also, again, if possible, find some quiet space. I know that can be hard. Um, ask questions and attend office hours. So again, office hours are Wednesdays and Fridays from 2 to 3 p.m. You don't have to stay the whole time. So if you want to come in and just ask me a question, you can leave as soon as you're done asking the question. Um, so make sure that you know that that's available to you. It's just like if, let's say, you, during lunchtime, you want to come in and ask me, like, hey, Miss, how do you do this? It's the same type of thing. Or it's like, um, instead of tutorial labs, so instead of period three, that's kind of our space. So stress check. Um, let's do a quick stress check from a zero to 10. How are you feeling? A zero meaning you're in a good space and you can focus. A 10 meaning you're not good at all. Let's go ahead and type that into the chat box, what number you're at. Good, so I see we have one student who's in the good space and can focus. We have a one. Um, I think I'm at I'm going to also respond in the chat box. Okay, zero. So I, that's what I thought A represented. I was like, maybe A represents zero. All right, but I see most of you responding. Um, okay. Thank you. I'm glad everyone seems to be like at least at an okay space to learn today. So today you're gonna to determine the three trigonometric functions for a given angle in a right triangle. This is what we covered at our last session. So sine, cosine, and tangent. We're just pretty much gonna do that again um, with a little bit more detail this time around and an additional step to that. So let's look at our do now. Um, so I noticed that a few of you submitted your do now, so thank you for doing that before this class today. Um, again, you can always do it afterwards, but I like when you guys give it a try to do it on your own first before you, um, before we review it in class. So let's go ahead and look at question number one. So it says, find the value of the trigonometric ratio. So we're gonna write SOHCAHTOA just to remind us that that's what we're doing. And notice that the focus angle is angle X, meaning this is what we're focusing on. So right away, I like to label things. So remember that the right angle, what's across the right angle, is your hypotenuse. What's across the focus angle is your opposite. And this one's your adjacent angle. So in order to find sine, notice sine starts with an S, this starts with an S. We need our opposite and our hypotenuse. So what's my opposite? 30 over. What's my hypotenuse? 34. But notice that is not an option. So, um, all right, so notice that that is not an option. So because that is not an option, um, we have to simplify. So one number goes into both. Remember one quick way to do that is I always divide by two because to me that's just the easiest thing to do is if they're even numbers, you can divide by two. 30 divided by two is 15. 34 divided by two is 17. Now is my answer there? Yes, it is. It is listed under A. Let's look at number two. So same thing using SOHCAHTOA. So our focus angle is Z. If I do that, what's the opposite of my right angle? That's my hypotenuse. What's the opposite of my focus angle? That's my opposite. So this one right here is my adjacent. And let me erase the rest of the information so it's not all um, messy and hard to understand. I'll leave this stuff over here. All right, so for cosine, I have to focus. Notice cosine starts with a C, so I focus on adjacent and hypotenuse. So what's my adjacent? This one right here, so that's 12. What's my hypotenuse? That's 37. Is this option there? Yes, it is. It's under option D. So when I go ahead and um, let me move this up there. Okay. Option D. And 
that would be your answer. So make sure to do the do now. It's only two questions. Just go back, get it done. You get full credit if you get both of those correct. If you don't get it correct, you can always take it again as many times until you get 100% on it. So try to get that done so you can get um, an improved grade. So what I'm going to try to do is at the beginning of every lesson is I'm going to do a practice problem. Um, or not a practice problem, but like a word problem. Because a lot of the times with math, we ask like, what are we going to ever use this for? And I get that because even though I'm a math teacher, I understand that sometimes you're like, why do I need to learn this? So I want to show you guys what are some, um, how it is that we use our math. So how do we use Sokotoa in real life? So our problem for today. So let's think about how we do three reads. So the first time I read it and I just look at what is the problem about. So in the chat box, once I'm done reading it, type in what the problem is about. So no numbers, no anything like that, just Quick, what is it about? A ladder leaning against a house makes an angle of 30 degrees with the ground. The foot of the ladder is seven feet from the foot of the house. How long is the ladder? So what is this problem about? So I see one response about how long is the ladder. Does anyone else have anything to add to that? Um, so again, the question is, what is this problem about? Okay, so we already have, so I saw, and hi, Chris, I'm glad you're here. So as I look at this, just because we don't have a lot of time, so I can't give too much time to respond, but if we look at this problem, it's about a ladder that leans up against the house. And then our second ring, so let me go ahead and read it a second time. A ladder leaning against a house makes an angle of 30 degrees with the ground. The foot of the ladder is seven feet from the foot of the house. How long is the ladder? So what math information did they give? I saw one of you wrote seven feet. So that's one information that they, one piece of information that they give that's math related. What is the other number that they give you besides seven feet? Good, so I saw 30. They tell you that 30 degrees. So we have our math information. And then for our third read, we usually um, either come up with a question or we come up with a way to solve it. So again, a ladder leaning against a house makes an angle of 30 degrees with the ground. The foot of the ladder is seven feet from the foot of the house. How long is the ladder? Um, so we're gonna try to figure out how long is this ladder, okay? So let's look at the, set, at the second portion. Well, let's go through it and at the end we'll review how to do this. So as we reviewed last time, so Katoa, S stands for sign, O stands for opposite, H for hypotenuse. The cut part in so Katoa, C stands for cosine, adjacent, hypotenuse. The T in tangent stands for opposite, A stands for adjacent. Again, I'm going to keep on going, but if at any point you need me to stop or pause or just take it slower, let me know. So when we're finding trigonometric ratios, first we see what's our focus angle. Something I noticed, this doesn't even give me the, um, we didn't even write angles. So this is going to be A, this is going to be B, and this is going to be C. And this is my right angle. Remember, in order to know which one your hypotenuse is, you look at the right angle and what's across. To know what your opposite is going to be, you look at the focus angle. And here we're focusing on angle A. What's across, that's your opposite. And the side, we have your hypotenuse, we have your opposite. Which one's left? It's your adjacent. So if we're doing Sokotoa, so, so, of course my thing is deciding the glitch. First, we look at our opposite over hypotenuse. 
So for opposite over hypotenuse, what do we, um, what numbers do we focus on? We focus on, let me make sure my pen is on. Opposite over hypotenuse because we're looking for sine node to sine. So that's this one. We put opposite over hypotenuse. So what's my opposite? My opposite is 15. What's my hypotenuse? It's 17. Again, for cosine of A, my focus angle A, we need adjacent over hypotenuse. So what's my adjacent? A. What's my hypotenuse? 17. And last one for tangent, so tan A, we need opposite over adjacent. So opposite, what's my opposite? 15. What's my adjacent? A. Eight. All right, so let's see how much time do we have enough time to go over this. I, hmm. Let's go over this one quickly. So this is my right angle. Notice that's my perfect corner. My, let's make this one A. This is gonna be B and this is C. So what's across the right angle? That's my hypotenuse. Which one's my focus angle? It's C. What's across? That's my opposite. And the leftover one is called the adjacent. So for sine of C, that's going to be, remember, so Katoa. Ooh, that's it. Sine of C, so what's my opposite over hypotenuse? So opposite, 10. Hypotenuse, 26. For the Sokotoa cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is 24, hypotenuse is 26. And last but not least, tangent is OA, so opposite over adjacent. So that's 10 for opposite and 24 for adjacent. Now, if you know how to simplify, go ahead and simplify that. So you can divide them by two, make them smaller. If you don't know how to simplify, leave it as it is for now. And then during um, office hours, that's a good time for you to come and learn how to do that. So now sine, cosine, and tangent, that's something you can do on your phone. So if you have an iPhone, and even if you don't, you should still have the scientific calculator, usually if you flip your phone. But let's say if I take my phone and I open my, um, my calculator, right? So it shows up, what is it, like that? But if I flip it, you know, you get all of this all of a sudden. So that's what you're looking at on the screen right now. So when you have this calculator, if you want to find sine, cosine, and tangent, first of all, this must be in degree mode. If it says RAD, like that, it is already in degree mode. You don't have to do anything. And automatically, if you look at, um, if you do have it on your phone, you're going to see that automatically when I open it, it's already on that. It already says RAD. So I don't need to do anything. That means it's already in degree mode. Now, if I tell you to find, let's say, sine, of 13 degrees, you would put 13. If I say sine of, so let me show you an example because I know that that's just a lot of time. If I say sine, find the sine of 30 degrees. You would first plug in the angle measure. So the angle measure is 30, so I would put three, zero. And then I would put whatever they're asking for. Here they're asking for sine, I would press sine. You press equals, or even, you don't even have to press equals, it gives you the answer. So let me try to show you on here. So I'm gonna put, and this might be a mess, but let me put in 30. And then I'm gonna press a button that says sign. And that gives me an answer. Okay. So that's how you do it. Now this table, this is something that I would go ahead and um, copy down because this gives you the answers for a lot of these automatically. So if I ask you what's the sign of zero degrees, you go sign of zero degrees and you look for it here and it tells you zero. If I ask you what's the um, cosine of 45 degrees, the cosine, cosine of 45 degrees, look at where that interacts, that's square root of two over two. Um, I don't have 
too much well we don't have too much time to copy this and i know that it might require you a few minutes so what i'll do is i'll post this to you on schoology um i'll make sure to post this this page this powerpoint slide um so that way you can copy it down or you can just have it there in case you need it but either way on your calculator it is really easy to just plug in again you would put 45 and then you press sign and it gives you an answer and it'll look a little bit different than this but it's still the correct answer okay. all right so as practice um what i would want you guys to do if you have a phone that you're not using for um zoom can you guys type into the chat box that you have a, a phone you can use and if you don't have one right now that's okay i just want to see who can do these problems and if not enough of you can do it then uh, then i'll try to see how we can keep going so again my question is do you have a phone that you can use um right now that you can use a calculator with Okay, so I saw one yes. And I know sometimes some of you use um, your phone for Zoom. So I know it's, if you use that, then you can't see the presentation. So I understand that. I only got one yes. So what I'll do is, um, since you are going along with this piece, go ahead and do it on your phone. Um, and I'll try to show you guys at least a few practice problems of how you would do it on your phone. And if you guys don't have a phone um, that you can use that with, you can always type it into, onto your computer, you can just type in a, a calculator. It's called a scientific calculator. So let me go ahead and do, we're almost running out of time. So I just wanna do a few problems on here. So again, I would type in the number for number one. I would type in 27. So if I put in 27, so notice I put the number 27. And then I look for sign. So sign is right. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but sign is right here. So let me put that in. And that gives me that number. I don't have to put all of them. I would only put like 0 0.453. Um, if you are following a long piece with this, let me know if you are getting the same numbers or if you need clarification on anything, okay? So let's look at question number two. Oh, you got something different? Okay, let me see if you got the radical answer, let me see. Um, okay, yeah, that's what, that means you press that button. So let's make sure that you press that button again that says, um, now it says DEG. So press so that it says DEG. And then try it again and let me know if now you got the 0 0.4 answer. Because that means you put it on radical. So you wanna make sure that at the very corner of your, Thing it says R A D. If it says D E G, that's you don't want it to say D E G. You want it to say R E D because it's the opposite. If you click on that, that'll put it on radical mode. If you click on it, so you want it to say R E D. Hopefully that helps. Once you put that, then it'll give you the answer. So again, so let's try question number two. What do you guys get for number two? So cosine of 45. And again, you know, there we go. So hopefully you got 0 0.707. If you um, didn't again, it'll be that function. You have to make sure it says RAD at that left corner. And then you would keep doing that. Again, if you don't have um, a phone, a calculator like this one on your phone, if you type into Google, you type in scientific calculator, you can do this same type of problem on there. Um, you just put cosine or you put COS 45 degrees. So let me type it into the chat box for number two. You would type in, and then let me, I'll check right now. Um, you would type in cosine like that. You can type in 45 degrees like if you just type that in to just like I put it in the chat box for number two into Google it'll give you the answer for number three I know that um PC got number three as as one so let's go look back at our chart tangent of 45 is that on there yep tangent of 45 degrees 
Notice it does give you one. So it gives you the same as a calculator does. So that is correct. Okay. So hopefully you have some idea. We're running out of time. So I want to make sure you guys um, know that again, if you have any more questions on that, there's always office hours because I know we kind of had to rush through that a little bit. And as far as our original problem goes, I realize that this is something we're going to really cover in our next session on Thursday. This is just more of an introduction to it today. Um, for your next steps, so after class today, if you didn't do the do now already, please make sure to do that for today's date. And then complete your exit ticket. So your exit ticket will require you to do what we just did. Um, and then there's a do now for our next session also. So again, you have two do nows to do and then your exit ticket. If you have questions, Wednesdays and Fridays, two to three, and don't forget, you don't have to stay the whole time. Um, I don't want you guys to think you do, and maybe that's why you don't come. I know some of you do show up to ask questions and then you leave, and that's perfectly fine. 